Yo, what's up, everybody? How's it going? It's Wednesday afternoon. Glad you guys are here. Audio podcasters, YouTubers, everybody that's with us here on the pre-roll of the podcast. And as always, I just tell you guys how much I appreciate that you support our sponsors. Now, look, I get it. Like at the beginning of the broadcast, um, unless you're going to listen all the way through, a lot of people will get through this and they'll be like, come on, let's get to the content. But I always say to you guys this, without our partners, we can't do this every day and we can't expand the way we're planning to expand here in the next two to three weeks. And I'll explain more of that as we kind of get closer to it. Hey, look, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to mention everybody, Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com is their website. And Alex will put the QR code up on the screen. There it is. If you are thinking about blackjack, poker, and other table games, this is the best casino in San Diego for this reason. It's the closest one to downtown. You don't have to go 40 miles east. All you have to do is go seven miles south. You get right off the freeway, and it's right there. Um, Bay Boulevard in Chula Vista. It's about a half a mile north of the new uh, development, that the Gaylord development, that whole uh, convention center that they're doing. It's open 24 hours. Parking is easy. There's no smoking. Great food at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. But I say this stuff to you guys every day. You know. You know the story. But uh, I really want you to jo enjoy Seven Mile Casino and be a big winner. SevenMileCasino.com. Any problems with gambling, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, I want to thank our friends at Tory Holistics, California Holistics, and Oxnard Holistics. If you are buying cannabis products, okay, a lot of people use cannabis because they just like to smoke weed. They like to get high. But you see a lot of other people use cannabis for pain management, for anxiety. And I'll tell you, I know a ton of people that you would never consider weed smokers, but they use cannabis to go to sleep at night. So for whatever reason you use cannabis products, there are lots of places to buy. I ask you to support our sponsor and our partner. That's Tory Holistics in Sorrento Valley, California Holistics in Chula Vista, and Oxnard Holistics in the 805 Grandes Hood. Now listen, you talk about having fun, all of us together. How about prize picks? If you download the prize picks app and we'll build our card today, download the app, use our code great friends. They match your first deposit 100% up to 100 bucks. You know that story by now, but it will change the way you watch sports. How many of you guys last night were watching the NHL Stanley Cup Finals? Okay. Now, how many of you were watching because you had a play on prize picks? You may not have been interested in the Stanley Cup game five last night, but because you maybe were playing Connor McDavid to see how many goals he would have or how many shots on goal. And that's the thing. Basketball season's over. Hockey season's coming to an end. We're going to play baseball. We're going to play WNBA. We're going to play video gamers like League of Legends. There's a lot to play on prize picks. And who knows what they got planned for the Olympics? Download the Prize Picks app. Use our code, Great Friends. Hey, big shout out to our people at Blenders. I've been saying this now for a couple of days. When we expand, as we're going to, companies that are San Diego based but have national and international reach, they're going to be the big beneficiaries. Okay. When Blenders Eyewear is with us on national TV, on national radio, am I letting the cat out of the bag? I don't think so. Um, we're going to be able to sell more blenders eyewear than we do right now. And by the way, we have sold, I'm not joking when I tell you, tens of thousands of dollars in sunglasses. And when sunglasses are $49 up to $79 and you're getting a 20% discount when you use the code Kaplan, you can imagine how many pairs of sunglasses we've sold over the last two and a half months. We're proud to be in business with Chase Fisher. We're proud to be in business with blenders eyewear. And we're going to be proud to tell people around the country how great this product is. The lenses, the frames, the fashion, the people that are associated with Blenders, and we're going to tell the whole country about it. BlendersEyewear.com. Use our code Kaplan and save 20%. Hey, um, Mushroom Life is another brand. Life Brew. These guys right here, they're getting into the game of competing with the biggest brands that are already out there in mushroom coffee. When you turn this package around, you see the different mushrooms and natural mushrooms and what their health benefits are, but we're going to blow this thing up, man. We are going to blow Life Brew up. So if you haven't already supported local and tried Life Brew Coffee, use our code Great Friends. They'll save 30%, 30% on Life Brew Mushroom Coffee. Big shout out to my guy, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Realty. You see, the thing is, Gary's local. Gary is San Diego, Orange County, Riverside County. He is local. But I'll tell you right now, if you're looking to sell your house, you're looking to buy a house in Southern California, you're going to move in. Um, we're going to be telling people around the country, if you're moving to Southern California, you call our guy, Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299. You never make a move in real estate without first talking to Gary Cooper. And oh, last thing, you know what? The way we're working, the way we're grinding, the way we're hustling, you got to make sure your body is right. You got to give it the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, probiotics, and superfoods all right here in Athletic Greens, AG1, athleticgreens.com slash Kaplan. 
You get the five free travel packs. You get the one year supply of vitamin D. You get the subscription and you take it every day. It'll cost you less than a cup of coffee and you're going to stay healthy using Athletic Greens. All right, let's do it. I know it's been a long uh, open, but let's start the show. Here we go. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And as always, we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. I'm telling you right now, you are driving around in San Diego County. Could be Orange County, could be LA, could be Riverside County. You might even be further up north into the Central Coast. But I'm telling you that when you come to San Diego, because you decide you're coming down for a Padres game, not because you want entertaining baseball, or winning baseball. You just want to go to Petco Park and enjoy all that that is downtown San Diego. Well, guess what? Just come seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. That's Seven Mile Casino. You're playing blackjack. You're playing poker. You're eating at Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. You're watching all the games. You're having a great time in a smoke-free environment. Come on down and have fun. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. All right, we're just getting onto the airwaves of 1090. We are just getting onto the stream of YouTube. We're getting out there to all the different audio podcast platforms. And of course, tonight between 7 and 8 p.m., we're on television on Cox Your View. And more platforms on the way as we go from San Diego hometown to regional Southern California to wider reach on YouTube and audio podcast to full-blown national reach on television and another form of radio. More details on the way. We keep teasing it. We keep telling you it's coming. People are asking me about it. Um, I'll just say this. Uh, contracts are here today in email. Grande, brown man, right here. Email. Contracts. Contracts. Contract. Right here. Contracts, buddy. Right there. Just got them. Just came in. Just got them. What'd they say? How much? Oh, billions, dude. Billions. Billion. Are we like, stealing like, any money now? Ooh. Are we going to get walk-up uh, videos into arenas? Like we're, let's see here. Like we're uh, playing? Scott, let's see. Glad we yeah, had the opportunity to spend money, time. Though. Yeah, let's see here. Glad we had the opportunity to spend time this week on preparing the term sheet. Uh, yep. Please provide Ooh, that's me. That's what I care about. Don't give, me, no, don't give me no contract. Give me a term sheet. Yeah, I will have the document ready to submit to you by the end of the week. Oh, this is like real business. I mean, people mm. are this is real. This is business, man. Hey, Brown, I'm a business man I'm trying to do listen, business. Man, I'm, I'm, listen, I don't know. I don't, I know that that's L.A. Cap's got an agent. I just want to mm -hmm. tell you, Grande got an agent, and and he and his name is Kirk Cousins' agent. So we about to get paid. Okay. Oh, really? Whether I deserve it really? or not, we about to get yeah. paid. Yeah. Really? You getting Kirk Cousins' agent? Or at least I am. Now. I don't know if you guys yeah. are. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. I, I reached out to my him. agents. I was like, hey, man, yeah. you're set over there. Let's go make some extra money over here, you know, so we're good. Okay. My agent's been the same agent that I've had forever. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Emerald is his name. Uh, that's actually not his real name. That's his radio mm -hmm. name, you know, mm -hmm. because way back in the day when 1090 first started, and this is probably 2003, we had a program director named Bill Pugh. And uh, Bill Pugh was like, what is up with this guy, Rick Diamond? I'm like, dude, he's my agent. What can I tell you? He's like, you don't need an agent. This is San Diego radio. This is family owned and operated radio. And I'm like, no, bro. I'm like, I came here from New York City. I worked for CBS radio. You have to have an agent to negotiate these kinds of deals. It never works out well when you do it on your own. And by mm -hmm. the way, I was young at the time, a lot less experienced. They were going to definitely take advantage of me. I'm like, no, talk to Rick Diamond. And that's when Bill Pugh, called Rick Diamond, Joe Emerald, and that has been his name ever <laughs> since. Mm. That has been his name ever since. Seriously. Joe Emerald. Joe Emerald. That's exactly right. Brown, what's that uh, What's that lid you're rocking today, dog? That is sharp. Uh, Whoa. This has, been, this has been on the show every day. Baby, yeah, but I, I understand. But now that I see it on your on your head, look, because you usually, what, what's the name of that company that you get those hats from? Parks and Normal. That's Parks where this Normal. hat is from. Shout out. Well, I can Shout tell. Shout out to my I dogs. Can, yeah, but usually you're wearing that like San Diego hat. You got like the Tony Gwynn on one side and the Junior Seau on the other side. Mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. is a San Diego State hat. That Alex, do you? Yeah, that, that, you should be you should be rocking that Aztec hat right now. Nah, it's not my style. Hat. But uh, Brad said that's Browner style, man. That's not my style. I like it, but I can't be wearing that. Wow, I can't pull that off. 
Ah, uh, okay, that's true. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. I well, I can wear just about anything. I'm very clean with my hats. It's just a probably black with the logo. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, want my I did hat like dance. The, I did like the Padre hats the other day. I think they were in New York. Um, I didn't get to see the game last night. I heard it on the radio. But um, I didn't get to watch. But I saw the hats. I think it was in New York this past weekend where they had the brown hat with the, the City blue. Connect like blue, fluorescent Father's blue. Hats. I like those. Those are cool. Mm-hmm. That, those Father's are really cool. Yeah. I saw I the like Dodgers them. got new City Connect jerseys. Does that mean we can get new City Connect jerseys again? Please. Because that's please. round two please. for the Dodgers. Because the Dodgers' please. first City Connect were all blue. Remember blue pants, yes, blue jersey. Right. It said right. like Lowe's Dodgers on the hat. Yeah. And yeah. like I think these are much of an upgrade. And I can't stand our our City They're Connect terrible. jerseys. They're terrible. I think the merch really? is cool. I think the merch is They're cool. Terrible. But I think the jerseys are hideous. Ugly. Okay, the wait jersey, a second. I just want. Uh, they're the ugliest City Connect jersey in no, the that's league. That's not true. That's not true. There Which, is some worse? terrible. What's there's, worse, bro, dude? There's How about that? Really bad. Don't, don't the jersey. Rockies? Don't the Rockies have that like green thing? Green, yeah. That not full worse. green. Well, the I, you know, Brown, honestly, terrible. I don't really know. Like, I, I'm not doing like the yellow uh, Boston one. You, the yellow Boston one's nice. Oh, the Giants. Mean, the Giants are terrible. Let me see. You're gonna have to show us these. You know, uniform right. analysis is not my thing, but I will say this. I feel like I'm very much in the minority when I tell you that yeah. I like, yeah, I like the Padres City Connect uniforms on Friday nights. I like the fluorescent Miami Vice 80s colors. I like I them. Not. Everybody yeah. else I know hates them. Like Rachel hates them. She's like, these are the they're ugliest so things. Why ugly. do they wear them? So ugly. I love them. So I think ugly. they're great. That, I think they're bro, awesome. If the I'm Marlins, just you, these are the Marlins. If disgusting. the Marlins wore the colors the Padres wore, for mm-hmm. the city connect, it would make sense. Mm-hmm. Those colors don't even make sense. No, they That's don't make what we sense said when they first That's came true. out. That's true. That's true. They don't make yeah. sense, but I like them. That's all I'm saying. They have no because you're you're from. You spend a lot of time. See, that's that is not as terrible as people try to make it out. To Bro, that, no, they're wearing green pants too, Brown. They're, they're freaking terrible. Yeah, we're looking at the Rockies uniforms right now with City Connect. Yeah. So, um, you'd have to show us, Alex. The, the uh, White the Sox pre- have the best one. They do. You'll have to show. I us think the-, the Rays do now. Oh yeah, really. I have seen. See, th- but but this started because you mentioned the Dodgers. I'd actually like to see the previous Dodger, which was the all royal blue, okay. and then I'd like to see the current Dodger to see because I do know that there has been some controversy about the Dodger you know, City Connect and how there's no connection to the city. Which Browner, that's your complaint about the Padres. Is yeah. that there's no connection. Yeah. None. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? Maybe yeah. not the right guy to pull up, but here's a. <laughs> wow, in it. Oh my ah. god, dude. <laughs> That's just what popped up. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to have this conversation. That's just a Google hey, search. That down. Hey, hey, by the way, got news for you. The Dodgers yeah. could be in, in so much trouble with their pitching. I mean, theoretically, yeah. that maybe they decide, you know what? Julio Rias, uh, what's he up to? What's he doing? Nah. Yeah, they might get this. freaking Trevor Bauer back the way they're going. Right. Man. Hey, by the way, hey, you you say the way the Dodgers are going. The Dodgers last night were in Colorado. Speaking of the Rockies uniforms and the Dodgers uniforms, and the Dodgers are down big going into the top of the ninth inning, and the Dodgers have one of the biggest rallies and wins in Dodger history since like I want to say the 1950s. I mean, they came back from seven or eight runs down, whatever it was. Um, had a grand slam in the inning, had a three run home run in the inning, and the Dodgers. Came had from a, way back. Had an ump clearly miss a the final out strike of the game with its check swing on to Oscar Hernandez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I that listen that level of detail I didn't get to, but I yeah. can tell you this that well, the, the very were, next pitch he 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 gets him a go ahead, so that's why it was a big deal. Final strike okay. does a check Got swing, it. doesn't get called. It's clearly didn't hold back the check swing. It was clearly a swing, and they were like, oh no. They're good. And next pitch. Okay. Well, hey, se- seven runs in the in the top of the ninth inning, and the Dodgers won eleven to nine. And by the way, while the Dodgers were winning last night, the Padres are just killing Padre fans. Just absolutely killing Padre fans. Mr. Liver Dow over here. I don't even know he made it to the show today. Yeah. I mean, Alex, no, every dude, day I'm every game lucky. is life and death. I'm five feet deep right now. Was that five in a row? Every ah. every loss is a deep a foot deeper, dude. Yeah, oh, especially man. when you have a lead and you and you you have you give up a lead, you know. And yesterday, for those of you that were with us, um, 
you know that yesterday we had to break it out. Alex, I don't know if you still got it or not, but I got a lot of feedback from people, especially on social media. They're like, okay, dude, the, the, that's not in guy, the, those that's guys, what's that's in. what's in, that's, that's what's in those guys. Yeah. Somebody sent me on Twitter, like every one of their names, their names. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, bro, get, listen, no. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't need to know their names. I don't want to know their names. Oh don't send God. me, don't send me their phone numbers. Don't whatever doxing is. Don't do that. Right. All right? right. Don't do any. I don't care. Listen, I We're don't know We're not going to put them individually on blast right now. I, I don't know them. I'm, I'm making it clear because Browner keeps putting it on me. They're not my friends. They're not my neighbors. I don't know them. No. I've never met them. And the only time I've ever seen them was on KOSI. But I'll tell you this right now. Uh, the, the hardest Padres. denial you've ever had of anything oh, on this show. I, I, you, this is, you, I'm I pro, I oh want nothing God. to do with those boys. Dude, okay. This All right. Is the I want nothing to do with them. Ever. All right. <laughs> I don't, I'm not taking that one, brother. I will not take <laughs> that one on. Okay. But I'll tell you this the Padres, since <laughs> that's what's in, and I'll go back to it. I'll play it for you again. Since, no. and, and it's in, yes, it's awesome. Since that thing happened, oh. now the Padres are three and 14. Since October 18th, oh. Alex told us that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. October 18th, 2022, the Padres are 3-14 and 14 against the Phillies since that song. Mm -hmm. So while the Dodgers were making a spectacular come-from-behind win in Colorado, playing against a very bad baseball team, the Padres had a lead and blew it against Philadelphia, a very good baseball team. And no matter how many injuries the Dodgers have, uh, Pitching, you know, fielding, hitting with Mookie, no matter what kind of problems they have, man, they always seem to find a way. Jason Hayes. Yeah, and then yesterday, too, it's, uh, you know, to make matters worse, it's Robert Suarez. You know, it's not like yeah. you know, some, it's not Randy Vasquez, it's not Johnny Burrito, it's not, you know, name whoever random pitcher we got. It's the guy that's been pretty much perfect Consistent, all year long, yeah. and he manages zero outs in the ninth inning. It, it was right. It was I mean, quick. It was he's quick. Bound to blow, he's bound to blow a save at some point. Last night was sure. it. And against Philadelphia, I mean, look, you're playing against a team that is 49 and 24. They're the best team record wise in baseball. And when they're down by a run late in the game, they're not thinking that that's overwhelming, you know, and to score two runs in the bottom of the ninth and win that game. Ripping Padres fans' hearts out and Philly fans celebrating. Did you, see the, did you see who hit a home run yesterday again? Uh, yesterday again for Philadelphia? Yeah. Kyle Tell Schwarber. Schwarber? Yeah. So that's, wow, I wow. believe, now 89 at bats and 14 home runs. Insane. Against the Padres as a Philly. Well, that's what's in. That's the issue. Come that's on, what's man. in. Philly going down to yellow and brown. That's what's in. <laughs> Padres on the loose. Let's go, Goose. That's what's in. Bryce gonna lose, and Manny's gonna cruise. That's what's in. Give Philly no slack and send them back. That's what's in. I could watch that all day long. Okay, now, now, watch it okay, all day long. here's like the more I think about it. Right? The tall guy I'm in the sure. back, I freaking hate that guy. I want more to than the lead the singer guy in, in the front. What's his, what's his name? You got it. The lead singer. Oh, the tall guy you hate so much. I don't know. I hate that guy. I think we who do you want to interview the guy in the front? Who the lead singer? Yeah. Maybe I need to know. Maybe. I need to know. Mm -hmm. A. Whose idea was this? Mm -hmm. B. There's six or seven of you guys. Mm -hmm. Y'all thought it was good. Yeah. C. Or a third question. How did you get in contact with KUSI? How did you get on? How did you yeah. get on TV? Yeah. How did did you send them yeah. a video and go, "Yo, this is this is sweeping the nation. This is yeah. a, a a crazy phenomenon. Right. Everybody loves it. That's right. what's in right. Dude, maybe because here's my theory: an exorcism of some kind. Because here's my theory: All right, because I mean, they live in your neck of the woods. They don't. I I'm it's sure one of <laughs> one of them allowed. has a. Here's how they got on. One of them has a kid <laughs> who works at KUSI. And their kids like, hey, my dad and his friends got a great song. No, we should no put kid on. would ever do that. No kid would ever do that to their dad. No yeah. kid would ever. No kid would ever let their dad humiliate themselves like that. No kid. Well, I think when you have a dad, and now this is going to get personal, that would oh. do that in the first place. 
-hmm. your kid is probably as boneheaded as you are. And yes, Mm -hmm. you would. The word is not boneheaded. The word is douchey. No, I don't think they're douchey at all. I genuinely don't think think they're, no, I think think they're douchey. I think they're douchey. Douchey douchey Mm -hmm. is like, there's some arrogance, like a cockiness. These guys are just plain clueless. No, no, they're arrogant. They think their song is good. Yeah, to me. I think there's so let, me, let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question because <laughs> we should so analyze this every day. Every That's time they in. play the Phillies. Every time. Every so time. well, this is the last time. Thank God. Damn. Are y'all are y'all prepared to fight these men if y'all see them in public? <laughs> no. <laughs> there are people. There are people where they're like, it's on site, dude. Dude, I am I'm not fighting right these men. I'm telling you right now. The way y'all talk about these men, if they ever hear this, even the one you can barely see the video. Y'all got to put your hands up. And I don't mean for clapping or, or, or you know, raising them in the air like you just don't care. It's going to oh. be fighting time. Okay. If, what, if, they still if live was, in San Diego? If, they didn't, they didn't if, get forced to move out of the county? Bro, if I was one of these men and y'all would talk about me like this, mm-hmm. every time this came up, mm-hmm. oh, no, you got to see me. I'm going I'm to find one of y'all. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I, know, I know Scott be at the races. I'm, I'm going to come see you, bro. Ain't yeah. no way. Ain't no way you finna be talking about me every day. Every time this come up. You're going to yeah. tell me how much you hate me? You don't even know me? I'm going to see you. I'm going to give you a reason hey, to let hate me. Tell you, me. Let me tell you something. Uh, speaking of the races, you know, Del Mar, the races will open on Saturday, July 20th. Ooh, I only mention it because wait. now as I drive by, the fair is in full swing. And uh, I'm going to the fair on Friday night. It's Rubber Rubber Rachel's birthday. And she biggest. she's like, I know, so do I. She is like, I'm a San Diego girl. And on my birthday, on summer solstice, on the longest day of the year, I go to the fair. So on mm, Friday, right. on Friday night, we're going to see Jay Leno, Arsenio Hall, and Craig Ferguson, three like late wow. night talk show hosts combining for a comedy show at the fair. And um, and yeah, it'll be on. I'll see everybody at the fair on Friday night. How about that? Nice. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it does sound cool. Hey, listen, real quick. Um, we will talk Padres. We will get into the Dodgers, and we've got a lot of other stuff we want to get to today. Manny. Uh, Manny's just out of control. This Manny's finally becoming Manny, and I'm here for it. Uh, by the way, Browner, yesterday we were talking about our prize picks. We were talking about Cameron Brink. Did you see what happened to her last night? Yeah, man. That, that Not, looks bad. Doesn't look good at all. So we'll get to that, that story bad. coming up. Uh, but, yes, we will talk a lot about what Manny's deal is. And uh, we'll get to, I mean, Willie Mays to to hard knocks. I mean, we're going to be all over the place today. Um, Before we get there, though, um, I just want to say to everybody that uh, the first thing I want you to know is that that as you're getting ready to go to the fair or you're getting ready to go to to Del Mar later this summer, you got to get your new sunglasses with our people at Blenders Eyewear, okay? BlendersEyewear.com. And when you use our code, Kaplan, you save 20% on your brand new sunglasses. And so whether you're buying sunglasses because you just want to be super fashionable, whether you're buying them because you want to make sure you have polarized lenses to protect your eyes, whether you're using them for running or you're using them for, for, you know, being out on the water, uh, or you're just out there for a nice walk, just you're driving. I'm telling you right now, you're going to have so many pairs of blenders because you're going to walk into the blender store, or you're going to go onto blenderseyewear.com and you're going to go, why don't I have five pairs? You know, why would I spend $300 on one pair of sunglasses that are going to get scratched, lost, broken, whatever, when I could spend $300 and get like six or seven pairs? All you have to do is go to blenderseyewear.com, use our code Kaplan. You're going to see Coach Prime rocking them. You're going to see that that uh, that Red Bull team in the F1, they're rocking them. And you see us rocking them all the time too. Blenders Eyewear and blenderseyewear.com. There you go. All right. Hey, um, you know what the Padres need to do? win of game that'd be nice yep they need to do better mm. they need to do better yeah 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 and and Go i'll ahead. tell you something right now alex and i uh before the show we were going through um because i asked alex i go yo um any sales going on on our merch shop on our website and alex was like no not really and then he went and he looked and he was oh whoa wait a second today oh, apparently only today 25 percent off on our merch shop and what's Whoa. funny is, is I, I was like, well, you know, we've got a whole bunch of stuff in the merch shop that's probably no longer really relevant, you know? And then Alex goes, oh yeah, well, this one's pretty relevant. And we found the do better t-shirt. <laughs> the do better t-shirt <laughs> is be. available in the Kaplan and crew merch shop. And honestly, I suggest that we, next to the word do, 
We should have effing, do effing. And I don't mean effing. I mean, say, spell the word, do effing better. Oh. If you, if you tell me that, that, that the phrase, you know, uh, let's effing go San Diego is acceptable. Then do effing better is acceptable as well. 25% off today in the Kaplan and crew merch mm -hmm. shop. You should get one of those do better t-shirts. That's all I'm saying. Browner, would you rock one of those? Hell yeah, absolutely. You know, I love a good t-shirt. Yeah. They got to do, I, this, it, it is so ridiculous. I watched one of these John Boy videos from this past weekend when Manny got tossed out of the game and then Schilt got tossed out of the game and they broke down like every word that Schilt said where Schilt says to the umpire, just please throw me out. Like, you know, I'm here to get thrown out. Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like yelling and screaming at you. I don't feel like going through the motions, but I got to have my guys back. Please throw me out of the game. And the mm -hmm. umpire's like, really? You want to get thrown out of the game? He's like, do do what you're supposed to do. And she's like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to yell. I don't want to scream. Mm -hmm. I don't want to kick dirt on you. I don't want to yeah. spit in your face. I don't want to hit you. I don't want to bump you. Please throw me out of the game. Yeah. And the umpire's like, really? Are you are you ready now? And he's like, yes, I'm ready, please. And he goes, you're out of here. <laughs> and then she's like, what the hell? You know? And John Boy. Nah, he didn't even do that. <laughs> I know. It's hilarious. Wait, we'll get to the Manny story because this is a big story. Coming right back. This is Kaplan and Crew. Uh, great friends. What's going on? How's everybody doing? It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And we come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. You're looking to play blackjack and poker and other table games. You want to have a great brunch on the weekends. Sammy's Restaurant and Bar has got the best brunch in South County. That's according to San Diego Magazine readers. Easy access, seven minutes south of downtown, uh, right off the freeway. No smoking, easy parking. I'm telling you, it's the best place to go. Seven Mile Casino and SevenMileCasino.com. All right, so look, yesterday we started to get into a conversation. And hold on, time out. By, as I say yesterday, got a lot of feedback yesterday from some great friends on a couple of issues. One, Browner, the discussion we were having yesterday about the gay bar that I was in in Palm <laughs> Springs on Saturday with the drag queen this past Saturday afternoon. That was one thing people commented on. And the other thing people commented on was the Island Boys video that my daughters got me on Cameo uh, for Father's Day. So those two pieces of content from yesterday's show in particular were uh, things that people commented on. So appreciate your feedback always, everybody. And uh, you know who you are out there. All right, Grande. Shout yeah, shout out is right. We we got into this Manny Machado thing yesterday. You want to you wanna reset it so that if we reset why we were talking about Manny's crappy performance and his lack of effort and all these other, and, and we kind of gave him a break. I think we gave him a break yesterday. Like, Hey, you know what? He's not hundred percent. He's not, he's kind of hurt. Um, Mike Schilt goes to the media and says, Hey, he's playing his heart out out there. You know, he probably shouldn't even be playing great. Um, I felt like we all gave him a break yesterday, but I guess not everybody's as, as soft on Manny as we were yesterday. Can you reset this story for us? Uh, yeah. Saturday night. I believe Saturday night, Manny um, hit into a grounder. Uh, this is the same night that he struck out three other times. The Mets third baseman bobbles it, and Manny's jogging down to first base while blowing a bubble. Um, and then no on effort, Sunday, no effort at all. No effort at all. Well, and I, I, well, and I, well. I don't want to make you come off as foolish because we'll we'll show some some quotes for Manny. Then I don't. I you say no effort. You say no effort. That's right. But it's wait a second. Nice I just thing. want to say this. I, you I said say no tomato. Effort. Yeah, I mm -hmm. said no effort yesterday, but I also said, but wait a second. Hold on a second here. Oh. The guy definitely hurt his hip about a week and a half ago or so. Mm -hmm. And I will give him the credit for realizing that without him, they're not as good. And, and they're not exactly. I mean, look, people will tell me all the time. The National League sucks. Right. And, mm -hmm. and the, the Padres Which can is hang important. around. And, and, the, and the Padres can hang around being average because the National League sucks. And Manny's season thus far has been a disaster. You know, part of it could be that he's coming off of an arm injury that, you know, he didn't play. He wasn't at third base for the first probably month or so of the season. And his batting numbers are not what they are supposed to be based on his career near. history. Right. So I'm, I was willing to give the guy an ounce of a break that he's actually going out there and trying to tough it out. But he can argue all day long. 
that's old school lack of effort yeah. Manny Machado and because then, it's so it. it's such a polarizing difference between Saturday and Sunday and then on Monday clearly he hears the noise clearly the questions see he may not hear it from fans like he may not be on Instagram he may not be on YouTube he may not be on Twitter but when he By the way, knows, he's on Instagram when he wants to promote his soccer team he's on Instagram when he wants to promote the San Diego Football Club then he's on Instagram future MLS champions. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out Chucky Lozano. That was awesome. Um, that was crazy, by the way. The up, shell. Okay. The sh <laughs> shut dude, up. Browner, you didn't see what they did at the shell <laughs> downtown? Dude, they, that, they had that place packed. I mean, it was like LeBron came to Miami. <laughs> A real Seriously. sports coming to town now, finally. A real oh, sport. Wow. All right. Are, are we going to have them all there? We're going to have Chucky all? You guys want to do an interview in Spanish? I do. I could. I, I could hear my list of my name. I do. Mm -hmm. I want to do it in Spanish. He don't speak no English. I don't think so. All right. Well, then we'll have you do the interview, and then you can tell us. I mean, what he, he hasn't said. played it. He's never played in an English-speaking country in his life, so I don't see the need to really. I'm sure he speaks some Dutch. I'm sure, he speaks some Italian, and definitely speaks Spanish. But I don't know how much English he's got in his repertoire. I'm sure he got some English in his bag. He got. He got as much English as Otani does. Only Otani still needs an interpreter. So he's fully capable of speaking English. He just doesn't want right. to. Pretty much. That's what you're okay. saying. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So go All back. I'm saying so, is this with Machado. So he does that on Saturday and Sunday. And then on Monday, because the what questions you, are what being is asked, Sunday, though? No, what, what, what's Sunday, Sunday though? Because... He got ejected and he like flipped out. Okay. Was Sunday was the ejection. Yeah. Okay. Sunday was Sunday ejection. Was ejection. Okay. Monday, clearly the questions start being asked about the hustling, mm -hmm. about the effort, about the injuries. That's when he starts hearing the noise. So mm -hmm. what does he do on Monday? He gets a hit and the center fielder is like lollygagging it the philly center fielder so what does he do he beats it out the second he gets a double the very next play there's a pop-up to right field and what does he do oh i'm gonna tag from second to third and show that i actually can give effort God, because now i hear the questions the he does, he does it all this the all the time like, like remember earlier in the season when he kept uh um swinging at the first pitch and hitting mm -hmm. into double plays and we're like manny can you look at a pitch can you have you do you know what a take sign looks like and he would hear the noise mm -hmm. swing at everyone Kept swinging at every first pitch. I'll prove to you guys I know way more baseball than you, and that's fine. Maybe you do, but mm -hmm. but I do love that he hears the noise and then responds in game to the noise. Right, it, and he knows, just, and he he hears everything. It makes you look worse, but in my opinion, it makes you look worse when you're now out here doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, Why because now we time? know, because now we know you can give that effort. Correct. So either your hip is bothering you or it's not. Because now if you could give that kind of effort, not. what is that kind of effort it's before? His, his hip is not bothering him. And guys like me and you guys yesterday who may have given him a little bit of a break, who may have given him a benefit of the doubt, we look stupid too. Because you know no, what? Brown is giving uh, him the benefit of the doubt and so have I with the elbow. You know, we've been, yeah. we, When you were gone on Monday, we compared him to, well, I think it was Monday, with the the whole Bryce Harper thing last year, like Bryce Harper right. could not hit a home run for the first half of the season. Like he was physically unable because of his elbow Correct. surgery. And then second half, he heated up. So we were kind of saying maybe it's something similar. You know, we're trying to give him benefit of the doubt yeah. with the elbow, with the hip, with yeah. But but, but when it comes to he, effort, that's just right. well, that's just it. Is that Saturday when we looked at that video of him hitting that grounder, that weak grounder to third base, and third baseman is bobbling the ball all over the place. If Manny is hustling. The way he hustled last night to turn a single into a double, to tag from second to third, if he hustles like that on Saturday, nobody's busting his balls. But when you don't give effort, and then you essentially are blaming it on injury, and then you do give effort and you show the kind of speed that you have, and then you wind up doing what he always does, which is he's always kind of, he's never, ever, ever wrong. You know, he's, it's, it's always, he has to always kind of tell everybody how right he is. I'm telling you guys right now. He's going to blow up. If, if he keeps playing as poorly as he's playing, he's going to lose his mind. And I'm, and I'll always go back to this. It was the dumbest thing ever. Giving Bogarts the money they gave him was stupid because it led to giving Manny this extra contract, this, these extra five years. And that was stupid. And now we're stuck with these two contracts and these two guys, and it's going to kill the Padres future. So MLB.com yesterday, because the questions are being asked, now you got national reporters asking him these questions. A, they're right. in the East Coast, so they're around. And they're and they're coming for him too, because they because uh. people generally don't like him and they know that yeah. they can get him to blow up. So they, you know, the 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 hustle, you know, 
discourse that's the new one right not narrative around manny manny machado has <laughs> always existed since he said hey i'm not mr hustle or whatever manny yeah, i'm not johnny something. hustle or something johnny like hustle that. so here is manny machado's first quote and we can dissect it as much as you want because there's some doozies in just one quote from mlb.com people think i'm a speedster like i'm hassan <laughs> kim or ellie de la cruz pause uh, do you guys think uh, that? Have I don't you ever think, thought that about Manny Machado. I, I don't look at Manny Machado and go, "Hey, look, five tools, man." And one of those tools five is that tools, as, that that's that's a guy who can burn him up on the bases. But Listen, I do maybe think I played too much MLB the Show, but I'm pretty sure his speed rating is about a thirty. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's a speedster, <laughs> but but that's when you're not a speedster and you are a big guy like he is, and you are a power hitter like he's supposed to be. No one's asking you to be Ellie De La Cruz. No, no all one's trying to have you steal is, 30 bases. Dude, right. just, just give effort running to first base. That's all. Absolutely. You have a reputation of a guy who, in his career, has – I mean, there's a preconceived reputation of, not dude, you don't hustle. And, so it's, also, we, and it's also not to, to, not to compound the fact, but it's also his personality. His personality is super laid back, well, super chill. Yeah. That doesn't help his I don't hustle – narrative discourse okay so let, keep going with the rest of the quote uh i weigh 230 pounds i've never been a fast runner my entire career okay that i agree with i wish i had that speed because i would be a different player but i don't i give my 100 percent every single time it may oh, not no. look like people want it to look like but that's not who i am well what what, so what are you okay what? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, dude. Listen, can I? I'll just ask it like this. You know, he's blowing this bubble, running down to first base, and there was a play, the play that he got hurt on a couple weeks ago, as he's running to first, and he's giving you what he got. He's giving you the best he got. He's blowing a bubble the whole time, and we pointed out that it's kind of weird that he can consciously think about blowing a bubble while giving a hundred percent effort running to first base, and that was the play he got hurt on. And again, if you were to go back and look at that play, the play he got hurt on, he's giving you his best. When you look at the play on Saturday, he's giving you a half-ass effort. And, you know, he says, well, it may not look at, like that to some people or they may not like what they see. or whatever. Dude, I'm just telling you what I see, man. I, I can right. see with my own eyes, this is 100% effort. This is faster. This is 50% effort. And it's a lot slower. You don't have to be a major league baseball player or even have a, a speed gun or a stopwatch to figure out the difference. You know, you can't you can't have a performance where you go out and now you're making all these hustle plays and then come out and have a quote like this. Like it just doesn't the way he carries himself amongst the media, it just gives off one of the terrible things that we all hate. From the when athletes get like this, like I'm cooler than you, you don't understand. I'm smarter than you. I know more about this than you. It's like, yeah, bro, you might, but I can see you. Like <laughs> I have eyeballs. I can yeah. watch you not run hard. Yes, you know more baseball than me. Yes, you know whatever, but I can still see you. And that's the yeah. part that really you know flies in the face of when guys give quotes like this. Like, bro, I can see you not hustling. Just say, hey, man, it's a long season. And sometimes, you know, I, other things in my head, I should have ran harder, but I didn't. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. But it's, it's to fight uphill and go, oh, you know, I'm not L.A. Daddy Cruz or Hassan Kim with my speed. Like, I know, bro. We can see you. <clears throat> so on Monday, we keep this going. On Monday, we also said, but it would be a benefit for him to sit just to get healthy. And at yeah. this point, the way he's playing this year, the way he's playing this year, and I'll show you the numbers later. How how hurt is this roster going to be without him? How how much well, worse can this can this roster be without him in the lineup? Well, that's you know why earlier when I said that you know give him credit for for trying um, if he is hurt Which we do because because he do. knows because he knows that the team is not the same without him. Alex, you started to shake your head like no, not really, and that's yeah. because because he's been terrible. And so if you took him out, of, you're not taking a guy who's hitting 350 out of the lineup. Right. You're not taking a guy who's already got 20 home runs out of the lineup. Here's the numbers for those of you that are listening. Everybody watching can see the numbers for themselves. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah. Walk us through. So this. now we can be, we can really, you can really 
talk about projections because we're halfway through the season. We're like two games away from being 81 games into the season. So far, he's hitting 249, six home runs, 33 RBIs. He's on pace for a 12 home run, 66 RBI season. That's what he's on pace for. So his career average, 278, 31 home runs, 96 RBIs. On average, he's a very damn good baseball player. This year, he's not. If, if he hits 12 home runs and has 66 RBIs and you paid him $35 million to give you that, um, that is what I will call, and I'll call it now before we get to the end of the second half of the season, that is another wasted year for the Padres. And that is $35 million down the drain. Because honestly, if you didn't sign Machado last year and you had to sign him because you know the cancer in the, in the clubhouse, he would have been if Bogarts got paid and he didn't get paid. Or he might have taken off. Um, but had he taken off, you might have Soto. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't afford Soto because you paid Bogarts and you paid Manny. And you paid Musgrove and you paid Darvish and you'd already previously paid Tatis. But the fact is, you put your money into Manny Machado and right now you're getting a guy who's, I mean, he's a 25% all-star. I mean, he is for not. Guy, for, for a guy who just signed, signed a contract like that, man, this is bad. This is bad. This is really, really bad. Well, let's keep going. And it, and it looks worse. Because we got more quote. Oh, all right. All right. Well, hold on. Before you get to this next quote, let me just give everybody a quick shout out. My guy, Mushroom Life, Brett shout Weiss. Out. I'm going to tell you right now, you can save 30% by using our code Great Friends. And if you are like, well, what's the deal with mushroom coffee? Like, why would I drink mushroom coffee as opposed to regular coffee? Mushroom coffee is not like this crazy stimulant where all of a sudden you get this caffeine buzz. It's about so many other things. It's about focus. It's about concentration. It's about reducing inflammation. And you can read all about the different mushrooms. These are naturally grown mushrooms, not mushrooms you've heard of before, shiitake mushrooms and turkey tail and king trumpet and lion's mane. And they all have a different health benefit. And you save 30% locally based, locally made right here. LifeBrew, L-Y-F-E, LifeBrew.com. And by the way, we are going to sell the hell out of this stuff nationally. I mean, we're selling it great locally and regionally, but wait till we get national. You're going to see how much we're going to sell. Use we're the code great friends. We're just awesome. giving it all away. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, 30% savings uh, by yeah. using the code great friends. Keep going, Alex. What's the next Manny quote? Next quote. Uh, so now obviously questions are asked about his injuries, how it's impacting him, affecting him on the play or uh, during his play. Here's what he had to say. Anybody else would have gone on the IL. Something has to be broken for me not to play. My 60 or 70% is 100 for a lot of people in this game. I'm not trying no, to sound cocky God. or anything, but I know what my ability can do. There are going to be times where you're going to run it out to get the extra base and score a run like I did on Monday, which nobody talks about. That's what kind of ticks me off a little bit. People watch us play every single day, can have an opinion, but when you just catch a glimpse and you just see a highlight, you don't have the full story. Well, he's not talking about us because we do have the full story. We do watch. We're the every, day. we're the everyday guys. We're the everyday and and guys. I and, and I will give you guys. You guys are more everyday than I'm everyday, because there are certain days like this past week when they're on the East Coast and I'm playing LA Cap and I am not literally sitting there watching every game. You know, right. Bro, and I've got to go back. So I, I went to the East Coast. What you talk about, Manny? Yeah, he went to the Mets game. I went. You there. Did? I was there. You went to the Mets Padres game. Let's go with it, yeah, man. dude. This dude was oh, great. This dude was nice. He was in New York. I knew you were in New York. The game. I know, but I, I didn't know we could say that you were in New York because I didn't know, you know, if, if shout out to know, Flush. That was allowed to be, you know, out in public, you know. We talked about it on Monday. So that's why yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know when you carry three phones, two of those phones might ring, like, where are you at? Mm -hmm. You know, why are you there? Facts. Facts. All the time. Thing. Yeah. It's all yeah, good though. Up. Browner, it Browner never saw the darkness because he was in the club till seven in the morning every night. Shout out. Love For real, man. Yeah. Love New York. Let me tell y'all something about New York. It's always something to do. It's always something to do. They oh, literally yeah? ain't sleep. They ain't sleep, baby. Mm -hmm. They ain't sleep. Huh? That's mm -hmm. all I'm gonna say. <laughs> they ain't sleep, baby. All right, all right. I love how Manny says, you know, um, my sixty or seventy percent is better than most guys' one hundred percent. You know, um, Not this year. Yeah, you know what? Someone should have read him his stats from this year. Nobody's should I read him again? Gun. Nobody's got. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine Kevin AC saying this to him, Manny? Hey, listen, 
you say 60 to 70 percent of Manny Machado is better than 100 percent of most guys in Major League Baseball. And you say you don't want to sound cocky. You just know what you can do. If we look at your career average, batting average 278, home runs 33 per season, 96 RBIs, you know, that that's your career. That says you're a really good ball player. Great numbers. But then look at this. Six home runs, uh, 33 RBIs, a batting average significantly less than your career average. Is 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 60% Manny Machado at 30 or 31 years old really as good as 60% Manny Machado when you're 25? Like maybe you should get over your own ego and maybe you should actually say to yourself, I'm hurting the team because my arm's not right, my hip's not right, and I need to get healthy. And you know what? I'll sit down and let a full 100% healthy player go out there and see if they can help while I'm getting myself better. If all we get from a 60% Manny Machado is Trent Grisham, I'm pretty sure on that roster somewhere, they got a Trent Grisham to put at third base until we get 100% Manny no. Machado. No, we can't have Trent Grisham back here. We can't do that. Hey, we got one right now can't making $300 that. million. No, but that's much better than Trent Grisham could ever dream of. <laughs> unless you get to the postseason and you have one great run and it's it's really cool it's really crazy because like manny himself has he so that was mlb.com this morning ac releases something and manny is like detailing how much his elbow is bothering him like how much like it's not my normal swing it's not like this and i have to work every day to get it to so he's saying like i know i'm not me i know i'm not even close to me i know my elbow how much it bothers me and this and this and this and this, but yet we're still trotting him out there like he is. Like, why can't we just sit the dude down? Like, are we is Donovan Solano? If you throw him in for 75 games, can he not give you six home runs and 30 RBIs? I think he That's, probably can. I think he can too. All right, might get you seven home runs. And at the same time, <laughs> you get to you get to hey, even if he gets you five or four, is it that much of a difference? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, right. why not let your commodity, your expensive-ass commodity, right. get better? This is, right. like, a long-term right. thing, too. It's not just this year, man. It's, like, let the guy get healthy. Musgrove, Imagine, you too. Right. Shut down. Same Let's thing. get you exactly. healthy, dude. Exactly right. I All right, stick y'all. around. You did tell y'all. You did tell us, and we we were y'all. Uh, everybody stick around. We got lots more to get into. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, everybody, a uh, little halftime update real quick. I got a text message from Tommy Tommy, and he um, has mm-hmm. gone to the uh, Kaplan and Crew merch shop. And the reason he went there is because he was buying um, bowling T-shirts for his whole bowling team. So he wanted everybody on the bowling team to have like, you know, a uniformed shirt. And I think the bowling team is called like the Kaplan and Crew bowling squad or something like that. The reason I'm mentioning it is this. If you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com, Alex, maybe you could pull this up for everybody. If you go to our website, kaplanandcrew.com today, um, we never know when this is happening. They, these guys should do a better job of, of informing us. But in our merch shop today, we have a 25% discount. And it's apparently like a one-day sale. I'm not exactly sure why the company that we partner with does this. But whether it's the T-shirts, the hats, the hoodies, the coffee mugs, um, Whatever it is that you're looking at in the Kaplan and Crew merch shop, maybe you forgot to get something for your dad. Maybe you've got something coming up in terms of a birthday. Today, 25% discount in the Kaplan and Crew merch shop. And there you see, I, I really like that hat right there, the black with the white with the, the trucker hat thing. And look at the crew neck sweatshirts are really cool. And so there's just all kinds of stuff in here, all the Spanos hater stuff. And I mean, probably a lot of old Padre stuff that's not even relevant anymore. Bottom line is this represent the show, be a brand ambassador. Hook it up. This one's more relevant up. than ever. All right, let me see. Let me see what you got. Let me see. Oh, do better, bro. You know what? I'm so glad you're telling me that. Let's let's promote that during the radio segment and during the TV segment today. Yeah. Do fucking better. It should even be. It should say do fucking better. You know, there's there's uh, let's fucking go San Diego. How about do fucking better? <laughs> you know. Seriously, we should change it to do fucking better. All right, the T-shirts are on sale. The merch shop is open, and today is 25% savings. Let's go to the second half of the show.
Yo, great friends. What's going on? It is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. As always, we come to you from the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com. Glad to have everybody along who's listening on 1090 on old school, traditional, terrestrial radio. Glad to have all of our TV viewers here on Cox Your View, San Diego, Orange County, LA, Santa Barbara. Glad you guys are all here. Uh, to our YouTube viewers and everybody who's a chatlin and involved in our live YouTube chat, happy to have everybody along with us today. And to our audio podcasters, wherever and whenever, uh, glad everybody here is uh, tuning in. And like I said, you know, um, when you think about radio, TV, YouTube, and audio podcast, those are all great places to broadcast. Um, but I was on a morning walk this morning, and I ran into a gentleman who I've never met before. He was, you know, walking his dogs. And by the way. He, this freaking guy, man, he like, he's got two dogs, right? And he's picking up duty from the dogs, you know, and he's got, he's doing what dog owners do. And Alex, I'm sure you do this. I know I do this. I got the little plastic bag. I take the bag. I put my hand in it. I grab the duty. I turn the bag around. I tie up the bag and then I try and find a neighbor's garbage can to throw it in. Right. Yes. So, so this guy, he's, he's there and he goes, Hey Scott, what's up, man? I go, Hey, how you doing? I don't know this guy. Right. And he goes, hey, man, he goes, yeah, I used to listen to you and Billy Ray all the time, man, for years. I listen to you guys in the morning. I'm like, oh, great. He goes, you know, what do you guys do now? I'm like, well, dude, we're on radio every day on 1090. He goes, oh, I, I'm not really in the car in the afternoon. I don't really, you know, I'm working. I'm in the office. I go, well, you know what? We're on YouTube. We're on audio podcasts. I don't know if you have, you know, Cox Cable or Spectrum Cable. We're on cable TV at night. He's like, no, not really. He goes, I use a Roku at my house. I go, oh, <laughs> no. you use a Roku. I said, okay. I said, well, guess what? Um, in a, in a matter of just a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll be there too. Okay. Damn. And he's like, just well, dropping hints everywhere, boom, boom, boom. everywhere, everywhere, just dropping just little, like little, little, tiny, little nugs, little, little nuggies, little, you know, little ones, just leaving yeah. like just little trails yeah. for people. Like to if follow. you watch today's show, you pretty much know exactly what we're doing. Almost, you know, you know not exactly. Kinda. Well, I'm trying to drop little hints. I want all the great friends and I want all the chatlins to know what up. I like, you that. know? Yeah. So, um, so I said to him, I go, bro, he go, I go, we have to be wherever you are old school. You're in your car. You're driving to work in the morning. You're listening to us modern day right now. You, radio. Great. TV. Awesome. YouTube. Terrific. Audio podcast. You're not, we, we're not reaching you in any of those. Well, here comes that Roku and here comes another form of radio, et cetera. Et cetera. I'm going to get to you, pal. That's what I had to tell this guy. And then, you know what this guy mm -hmm. said to me at the end, at the end of it what all, he, you? What? he was Hey, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. And he <laughs> stuck his stuck his hand out to shake my hand. I'm like, mother effer. Like my instinct was to give him a fist bump because this guy took his hand, stuck it in the bag, picked up the dog duty, pulled no. the bag over his hand, tied the bag. I don't know if this guy's got dog duty on his hand, you know, or I don't even know where his hands have been. And he goes to shake my hand. And now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck. I think I, I, I am. I am the king of I don't care how awkward this is. You get a fist bump. Like, I don't care how awkward your hand gestures go after I just go like this and I keep it there. So, like, you it's a power, are, first of all, it's a power move. Mm -hmm. Oh, second, I just don't do handshakes anymore. So it's like, hey, if you want to fumble around with whatever you're going to do, you want to shake my my knuckle, feel free. <laughs> uh, shake my knuckle, boy. Shake my knuckle. Yeah. That's on you. I'm a handshaker, bro. I'm a handshaker. I'm not really. You know, I'm a handshaker. I don't really get mixed up with all the, you know, I don't do that. I get mm -hmm. old school, bring it in. You know, deal is signed and sealed delivered when you shake a hand. Boom. Mm -hmm. I'm the most boring handshaker in the history of handshakers. I white man handshake you. I'll give you the straight <laughs> wow. palm. That <laughs> That's it, brother. That's you give it. him the straight That's white it. guy handshake, huh? I give but you I have the a straight white man handshake. But I have a question for you. Um, if you saw the guy pick up dog duty from two dogs and he goes to shake your hand after cleaning up after the dogs and having his hand in the bag and tying the bag and everything else. Would you still shake his hand? Cause I shook his hand. Well, I didn't care. I, I had a good well, handshake by the way. Nice, strong shake. It depends on how you go about picking up the poop. If you pick up the poop in a way that, you know, like you described bag over hand, poop in bag, bag closure, boom, hand never touches the poop. I'm solid with you, bro. I'm you so, know, bring it in. Yeah. So you said it, you said it depends how you go about picking up the poop. What Absolutely. other way is there? 
Oh, this... bare hand this thing, or what, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> you bare hand that thing. <laughs> You got to pay attention because sometimes the dog, you know, they be having issues. Sometimes it's yeah, liquid. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's, it's a oh, lot you just of gotta ways. Leave those. You just got to leave those. Right. If the dog, if the dog, if the, if the dog is, if the dog has a loose stool, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just wanted to say loose stool. If the dog, <laughs> if a dog, if that dog got a loose stool, bro, you, yeah. you can't pick that up. So you got to run home and get my, like a bottle of water and shake down the street. Here's my know? thing. Like if, if the dog's got like a looser stool than, you know, and, and it's on grass, if I go in with a bag and try and pick it up, I'm just smearing it all over. So the chances of that thing drying out and becoming a nugget, that's gone. Now I've just infected <laughs> multiple, multiple blades of grass here. So if it's like coming out real weird, it's just going to stay there. But that's, that's a hand I'm not taking. Yeah. <laughs> Way to bring yeah. it home, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Way to bring it home. You, you know, it's funny. We're talking about dogs today. So, um, so I got a little bit of a problem here at my house and I wonder if anybody has any smart advice here. So this past weekend, while I was out in the desert celebrating Rachel's birthday, my daughter Jaden was home. Um, she's home from college for the summer and she was home by herself this weekend. And, um, she calls me and she was, dad, we got a, a little bit of a problem. I said, okay, what's the problem? She goes, the whole house smells like a skunk. And I said, well, what do you mean the house smells like a skunk? She goes, I'm just telling you that the door was open in the back of the house and the house smells like a skunk now. And I'm like, okay, wait a second. Because I know that we've had skunks around, that, you know, and, and in my backyard. So um, I've put out like this skunk deterrent Repellent. product that I, yeah, that I got from like a hardware store. Right. So I go around, I, I throw all this, you know, stuff out. I was standing in front of my house, like at night when it was dark out peeing all over the, the yard, thinking that a skunk might come up and go like, Ooh, there's a big old animal here. I don't want any part of that guy. So I peed all over my front lawn. Right. Um, but the skunk <laughs> is back. Well, apparently on Saturday night, the skunk must've gotten into my backyard. Yeah. Then my dog, Jack, went running outside and he, you know, he'll confront anybody. And Clearly. the skunk, this is, I, right, I'm, I'm just now, I'm, I'm playing forensic cop here. I, I assume mm -hmm. then what happened is at the crime scene is that the dog chased the skunk or barked at the yeah. skunk. The skunk must have sprayed the, the dog or the backyard and the, do the door was open. And now the next thing you know, the whole house smells like skunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my daughter and I go on to Amazon and we start ordering every air freshener, Febreze, carpet deodorizer, you name it. We're ordering something. Candles are being lit at the house. Every window is being opened. This is the next day. And I come home on Sunday. I walk through the door and I'm like, you know, uh, I, I, I don't think that I smell any skunk because she was telling mm -hmm. me that it was so bad Saturday night. She couldn't even sleep here. Right. So she bathed the dog in some kind of a skunk product and whatever. Tomato sauce. And uh, no, it wasn't tomato sauce. It was like a shampoo mm. to get the skunk smell up. Gotcha. And, um, and we, like I'm telling you, Febreze the whole house, candles lit, windows open. Okay. I think everything's fine. Today, this morning, all of a sudden I'm like, it just, Whoa. there's just something it's wrong. Lingering. Now, now what she did was she put uh, vinegar in plastic cups and she placed vinegar all around the house. Cause we read online that apparently mm -hmm. vinegar somehow brings the skunky smell in i don't know how exactly and we monday we threw away all the vinegar cups and i'm telling you that today i walk around it what the what the hell and so then she gives the dog a bath again she tries to clean maybe he still stinks i don't mm -hmm. know does anybody have any smart skunk ideas when a skunk sprays and then you can smell the lingering skunk I got a great idea right here I, you ain't got to go I, far Got a great idea I, for you. I, ready? I, you ready for it? Yeah, hustle. Get rid of the Do dog. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Problem solved. Head on back to your ex wife's house. Uh, uh, <laughs> get rid of the dog, bro. The yeah, dog ran great. up on. Listen, the dog, when they say F around and find out, the dog found out. Now yeah. you got to go to you smell mm. better, bro. I thought you were going to say move. I, <laughs> no, no. I, no, I ain't moving no whole house. No, no, no. I'm not moving the whole house. Man. I just got to move this little dog. You got to go. Yeah. I you mean, so, go. so, Brian, so, mate, mate, just understand. I take the dog smelling like skunk. 
Mm-hmm. I go drop them off at the ex-wife. Is that what you're saying? Is that right? Yes, that's good. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. How much idea. better? It's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Mm-hmm. Five ways right, to get rid of uh, skunk yeah. smell. All right, let me hear one, get oh, rid of the dog. Stupid. One, stupid. get rid of the dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. End the list. List over. Y'all yes, crazy. It's like hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and liquid detergent. Let's see what, what is that? Baking what do you soda. Do what do you do? We did that? baking soda too. She she had baking soda boxes like out around the house. Yeah, she had it all. Yeah. She did a good job. But now it's you now know, I, I guess smell. I guess my tomato sauce no. thing is doesn't really work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did all this. You did all this. And all you really had to do was get rid of the dog. <laughs> you just asked me a long time ago. I, yeah. I, I'd, sh- I'd have set you straight. I know. I appreciate that. Hey, um, no let me do this. Let me uh, let me say that yesterday we were building our prize picks ticket yesterday. And Browner, you had this idea of using uh, Cameron Brink um the center mm. for the la sparks and you know what it's yeah. a it's a good thing i never played that because i was trying to make my play yesterday and i was having a hard time for some reason like getting everything i wanted to get in and so i i'm lucky i never actually made the play and um lucky for me but not so lucky for cameron brink because um i saw what happened to her last night and alex i know we've got the video here you got to see this for, and, and again, I, I realize not everybody's into the WNBA, but I'm now into it because I play it on prize picks. If there was no prize picks, I'd be like, okay, Caitlin Clark got me into it for a little bit, but I'm over it. But because I play prize picks, it gives me action. Therefore, I'm interested in what's you got going action, on. Boss. Right, right. So let's let's see what happened Oof. here. Yeah. Oof. That knee, that enough. left knee just goes uh-huh. right there. Bong, gone, Ooh. pop, out for the year. Do you know that yesterday, Browner, I didn't play uh, Cameron Brink, and I did play Sabrina Ionescu to, score, to score more than 12.5 points. She did. I played Brittany Griner to score less than 18.5 points. She scored 19. Mm-hmm. And I played Brianna Stewart to score more or less than uh, 19.5. She scored 28. I played the two centers against each other to score less thinking that they would not have big games offensively. And it turns out they both had monster games offensively. So I had a big score on prize picks about two weeks ago. And right now I'm, I'm playing with house money, but I'm paying it back play by play. <laughs> Literally I'm paying it back every single day. And I thought yesterday I was like, Oh, this, this is going to be a good one. Cause this is five times your money. It's going to be a 20 unit play to win a hundred bucks. But Brittany Griner got me and Brianna Stewart got me. So I, I never play less. I always play more because you pick the two players and then you pick more or less on their projections. And I always pick right. more because I'm a positive thinker. I finally decided to play less thinking that these two centers would, would stop each other from scoring big points. And I was wrong on both of them. I mean, Cameron Brink went down like early in the game. I don't think she played that much either. I think it was like four or five minutes before that injury happened. Alex, show so, us, show us ooh. one more time. Cause we see her go into the lane and we see her kind of slide and, you know, this is going to be one of the big up and coming stars of the league. Mm. Right. And I honestly like it, it happens so fast. Right here. Here's the slow motion replay. Right. It's her, there. Oh, her left leg kind of like gets stuck mm. in the floor and the whole knee. Twi- and she's a tall girl. I mean, she's like six, four. Mm. So, her up. I don't think her teammates knew that how bad she was hurt because they would have just like help her up quick. Mm-hmm. And, and she was crying like she was full on crying. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you OK? Yeah, they had to literally carry her off. Yeah, they had to carry her off. You know what? Let's uh, let's build the ticket for today. What do you guys think? No update yet, though. Official update. No update on her. Okay. I mean, you can kind of assume, but yeah. Right. It looked really bad. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's build the ticket for today. Caitlin Clark today, eighteen points more or less. Um, Indiana is playing. Are you gonna? Are you gonna like adjust your strategy here? We're still going for monster tickets. No, I'm still going for monster tickets. I am still going for monsters. Okay. All right. All right. Does any, just, Browner, I don't know anything about I just the keep WNBA. giving you winners, but then you guys just start throwing in some random hockey and whatever else. Okay, I well, gave you Ronaldo yesterday, and I, I gave you that. Michael King, Aaron Nola yesterday. That's two for two. Yeah. That's a quick winner right there. I, I didn't get that yesterday. Connor McDavid last night? We back, baby. We yeah. back at this thing. Yeah. You, yeah. Oh, it's hockey. Edmonton. Told you, hockey, 3-0, that ain't nothing. People, that happens in hockey. All right, so let's do this. As for today with the Padres, um, what do we think today? Well, they're – 
already playing, so that can't happen. I know, but can't we play based on the time of the recording, or they're already playing like right now? Yeah, they're in like the sixth inning already. Oh, dude, I don't even know. I, I'll turn it on. <laughs> I didn't even know. Padres baseball. I didn't even know. Yeah. All right, so that uh, one's out. We can't play that one. Okay, we can't. We can't play that. And by the way, at the time of this recording, I'm just turning on this Padre game, not realizing what the, you know the, the whole East Coast, you know West Coast teams playing on the East Coast day games. It screws me up terribly. I'm sure it does everybody else too. Um, uh, you would be pleased to know that Manny Machado just grounded out and did not beat it out to first base. Okay, got it. One one bottom of the fourth is where I'm at right now. <laughs> um, okay, how about like Otani? He had a big monster home run last night. How about something with Are they in Colorado? Yeah, they're in Colorado. So just pound the Dodgers then. Just pound okay. the Dodgers. All right. So so Otani, uh, half a home run. I mean, home runs are tough, but I mean, I, I would two and a half hits runs in RBIs for Otani. Um half a run, half a strikeout. Is Otani gonna strike out today? Uh, I you know what? I'm a positive player. I'll play him for a home run. How about that? Okay. Who else? Who else should we play for? Playing somebody for a home run is hard. I know it is. Yeah. It is, but you make a lot when they when they do hit them. About Freddie Freeman, Freeman, half a hit, half a single, or just half a hit. Oh, half a hit. Here half it is. A hit. Okay. Okay. Um, who's pitching for the Dodgers later? Do you know? Bobby Miller. Okay. Oh, really? Any specials there? Like uh, giving up runs? Let's see. Bobby Miller and Ryan Feltner tonight. Uh, Ten strikeout combo. Yeah, I don't like that. Me neither. Or Bobby Miller, six strikeouts. I don't Bobby love that either. Miller. How about Feltner? What's his? How about Feltner? Bobby Feltner? Nah, I don't like. I don't like it. 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 Okay. Just trying to give you some winners, you know. Right. All I've got right now is Otani <laughs> for a home run, Freddie Freeman for a hit. Anything going on in soccer? Anything uh, that you like out there in, in soccer? Yeah, I'm looking at it real quick. Uh, okay. Yesterday, I gave you Ronaldo shots on goal. He actually that one over. Um, okay. Shots on target. Let's see what else we can do here. I'm looking for like anybody's name that I know. How about Messi? You ready for this? Messi, half a goal today versus That's Canada. That's not until Thursday. Oh, damn it. I know. I got to play daily. I can't. I can't. I don't have the patience to wait. You know? How about go back yeah. to the WNBA, Browner? You got anything? Like, um, how about Caitlin Clark tonight? 18 points, more or less, against Washington. Oh, listen. Whatever you got, Caitlin Clark tonight against Washington, go over. Okay. I'm going to go more. Washington's terrible. Washington's terrible. Okay. Washington is the team she had 30 against, and she made, I think, seven threes in that game. So look for okay. that to be done again tonight. Cause why, and I think okay. they're in Indiana. So I, Why does Kelsey Plum that. have an American flag behind her? I don't, uh, probably because she's American an Olympian. Girl. No, no, probably because hmm. anybody who's on the Olympic team probably has that. Because cool. I'm looking like, here's a Leah Boston. got one. No. Uh, how about Kelsey yeah, Plum I, tonight? Kelsey Ajah Plum Wilson? against uh, Kelsey Plum, 17 and a half points against uh, mm. Seattle. They're struggling. Uh, the Aces are struggling. 17 and a half. That's, mm, I would say more. I okay. Say more. Okay. Then I'll go less. Okay. Choking, taking more, Brown, taking more. No, 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 uh, no. no listen, listen, if you want to lose your money, go ahead. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's all I've got so far. I've got Caitlin Clark. I've got Freddie Freeman. I've got Otani. I've got uh, Kelsey Plum. Anybody else I should play? Asia Wilson. What do they got for Asia Wilson? 27, 27 and, a half and a half points. points. Damn, that's a lot. That's a lot of points against Seattle. And and against Seattle. Ooh, what do you think? Was no good, good, huh? Got to stay. Was maybe good. I go less. Maybe I go less. You know, don't see, know. okay, nobody feels strong about it. Okay, so no. all I've got is four picks right now. That's, that's Browner's territory. You talk to me about Caitlin Clark, I got you. I everything else, that's that's Browner. Okay, I got nothing else to play. I mean, I'm I'm hockey's not today. Uh, Welcome to summer. Well, listen, we're exactly. playing we playing WNBA and baseball. That's what we got. So I'm going to take it like this: Otani for a, a half a home run, Freddie Freeman for half a hit, Caitlin Clark for more than 18 points, and Kelsey Plum for more than 17 and a half points. That's my play. It's a 20-unit play to win 200 units. Submit my lineup. Okay, download the Prize Picks app. Use our code, Great Friends. They'll match your first deposit 100% up to 100 bucks, and uh, you're going to be playing with us and everybody else. Five million other people. We're all going to be playing together. There you go. You can use that QR code too. You have any other smart plays, Alex? No. Okay. Seems like I'm not familiar to... with Switzerland or Scotland, so I can't really get in on that. Switzerland. For soccer 
Oh, you supposed to be Mr. Soccer, Mr. Judy Ladano. Judy Ladano? Yeah, Judy Ladano? No, that's Who's not that? Judy Ladano. Is it Chewy? Chewy Ladano? What night Chucky was that Ladano. down at the shell? Chucky what, what Lozano? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was what okay. night was that that they did that Thursday. down at the shell? Thir Why you ain't going, Mr. Soccer? Did you go, Alex? No, I was out. out I was in Oceanside playing golf. Dude, I was in the Just desert. And I didn't even know. I didn't even know about it. But man, it looked like a sold out house. Um, it was? But, I'm telling you right now, Lozano came out, and you would have thought it was LeBron James in Miami. The way he came out, I mean, it oh, was it was not crazy. One, not two. He's trying to not trying three. to tell you guys. Trying he to said not uno, star. not those, not today's. No, but that's you it's amazing English, how how crazy San Diego sports fans are for a soccer team that currently doesn't exist. But this is what the team has to do because that's what the LAFC did. They built a fan base before they even had a team. All right, stick around. Plenty more to get to. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hey, great friends. What's going on? It's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. So Grande, Brown Man, um, I, I, this is something I've been wanting to do on the show for a while. I've, I said at the beginning of the year, we'll take things in different directions at times. Um, Browner, when you came back from Chicago after the craziness that happened in your life earlier this year, uh, with first your sister sadly passing, and then literally a few days later, your mom. And um, the thing when you came back, Brown, the the number one thing you said after all of that that has stuck with me the entire time is make sure you have life insurance. And just explain to me why you said that back then. Well, I think that a lot of time we don't necessarily know uh, uh, what how we're going to meet our end and you have so many other people around you in your life that depend on you that you don't take care of or have something left behind to help take care of you to you know finish off or, or leave anybody else going forward and so the idea of what happened to me was my people who don't know my mother passed my sister passed first and my mother passed shortly after that scott said but my mother didn't have any life insurance. She didn't have any, any money for the funeral. Uh, she didn't have any money to take care of any other things that she had left behind, whether it be cleaning out her home or all these all these financial expenses had to be picked up by me pretty much because there was no there was no one around to do it. And if you don't have the money to do that, the weight of that on the remaining family members is it's catastrophic because you are dealing with true heartbreak and sadness on one hand. And then on the other hand, there's the financial aspect of a funeral, a burial and the cost that come with those things. And so when you're dealing with both those things at the same time, it could be a very, very tough time for anybody going through that. And let alone one person, like I was able to, you know, through the help of so many people here, uh, find my way through that. But it's a lot of people who don't, man. It's a lot of people who don't. And so that process really, really got me to thinking and and, and looking around and, and trying to help educate people on what to, what to do for your loved ones where you won't be around anymore. Yeah. So um, with all that being said, you know, look, we've talked a bunch of Padres today. We've talked a bunch of Manny. We talked a bunch of Dodgers earlier today. Their comeback win against Colorado. We were talking about Cameron Brink and her injury. I said we'll take the show in a bunch of different directions. You know what? Since you brought that up to me about life insurance, I have not had life insurance in a couple of years. And I'll tell you, I had a life insurance policy um, that when I got divorced, I had to liquidate and give my wife the money, ex-wife. And then I had another life insurance policy. And through just all of the chaos in my life, I made a clerical error and didn't um, didn't pay the, the premium. And then they canceled me. And then I couldn't get the life insurance policy back because by this time I'm older um, there's, you know, not that I'm not healthy, but like a couple of things popped up and they were like, okay, we don't want to insure you anymore. So I'm like, you know what, Browner, this was your advice. People are like, what are you guys even talking about? Here's my buddy, Kevin Leon guys, Kevin Leon is up in orange County. 
Kevin Leon and I were players together uh, back in my college football playing days. Kevin was the punter. I was the kicker. And all these years later, we're still close friends. And this is the business that he's in. So I said, we need somebody to tell us about life insurance. So we're all going to learn something here today outside of Cameron Brink's knee injury. Kevin Leon, first time ever. What's going on, man? Glad you're on the show, Kev. What's up, brother? Hey, thanks for having me today, Scott. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to your team for getting this set up today. So, yeah. Well, you just heard what happened to Browner. And I know that, you know, what you'll talk to us about here today um, is, you know, we got to cover your ass. You know, you, you, you this is not financial advice. You're not soliciting people to call you. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that you're supposed to probably say. But the bottom line is, this is not financial advice from Kev, but we got to learn something about life insurance. Kevin, you just heard what John said. His mom didn't have life insurance. When she died, dude, there was like $15,000 of, of expenses related to a funeral. He didn't have it. Um, we raised it literally through our audience. We raised that money to help him alleviate some of the financial burden. Um, is, is life insurance out there? Is it easy to get for people? Is it affordable? I mean, just start us off with that. Sure. So let me give you some disclosures up front or else I will be in trouble. So I am a financial representative of Guardian and an investment advisor representative of Park Avenue Securities. This show is for information purposes only and the individual situations may vary and this information should be relied upon upon coordinating with individual professional advice. This does not con constitute an offer or solicitation of product or service and these opinions don't necessarily represent those of Guardian Park Avenue Securities. Oh my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god dude wow Scott, you don't... do you remember do you remember oh you have to read that stuff and then frank anthony would have to like fast forward it like 20 times just to sneak it in a 60 second ad oh my <laughs> god bro you got we got to say these things so that you can actually come on the radio come on youtube tell us what we need to know about this stuff but you know just everybody got to cover their ass oh my god that's horrible <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I can only do what I've been told to say. So <laughs> let, me, let me address this because I, I think this is kind of the crux of what's happened. And when I got in this business as a failed professional football athlete at the age of 25, one of my mentors took me aside and said, hey, you really got to love someone to buy life insurance. You know, I was like, I'm 25. OK, I get that. But what life insurance does is likely to create a pool of money for the beneficiary and their families to get through the tough times in their lives. That's what it really does. And it allows people to maintain their same standard of living with that right amount of death benefit in place, pay for burials, et cetera. Every situation is always different, but we wanna make sure there's a pool of money for just in case purposes. And for like business owners, business owners use it in many different ways, like for business continuation purposes. But when my mentor was talking to me about this, this all made sense to me, especially at the age of 22. I lost my father and he was only 49 years old and Scott didn't know him. And after 28 years in this business, I've seen too many cases where having no life insurance or not having the right amount had severe consequences on those left behind. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't take yeah. a lot of planning to get it done. Yeah. And Kevin, I'll tell you, you know, when John came back from Chicago after burying his mom, he, he came back and the first day he was on the air, he's like, dude, he goes, my one message to you is have life insurance because yeah. the life insurance would have helped pay for the funeral, you mm -hmm. know? And, 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 you know, so here's the thing, and I'll be totally, totally open and honest about this through Kevin. I had these life insurance policies. When I got divorced, I had to liquidate one of them to give the money to my ex-wife. And the other one, I told you guys, I made a clerical error and didn't pay the premium. It wasn't because I didn't want to pay it. It's just, I screwed up and I didn't pay it. And then they told me they were dropping me. It was too late. So I've been sitting here without life insurance for the last couple of years. And Kevin, I swear to you, whether it was Browner's mom or most recently, Bill Walton, 71 years old, I'm like, oh my God, I've got four kids, two are in college, two just are, are out of college. If something were to happen to me, I need life insurance, right? And, and most recently, I've been working on a new contract with ESPN. And when you're a full-time employee at ESPN, they have a life insurance policy for you. But I'm not a full-time employee of ESPN, so I don't have access to that benefit. So now I'm sitting here with no life insurance. I need life insurance. And I guarantee you, there are a ton of guys who are listening every day who listen to us for sports, mostly, and joking around. But sometimes we get into some serious stuff. This is, I'm not, I can't be alone. There's got to be a ton of guys out there just like me that need it. They're procrastinating. They're lazy. They're cheap. They think it's expensive. So I got to get some life insurance, dude. Can't I just get 
Can a 54 year old guy who's in very good health for my age, can I just get some kind of term policy? And I don't even know the difference between term and whole. Maybe you can explain that. Yeah. So you, yes, you can. Um, as long as we have good health, right? We typically can get some type of life insurance. And what term insurance allows us to do is get life insurance for a term of time, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever that term is dictated by when we go through underwriting. It's definitely inexpensive while you're younger, but may become cost prohibitive when we get older. And, and that's only because as we get older, and I can attest to this at the age of 53, like I'm just not as healthy as the first day that Scott and I met on my recruiting trip. Okay. Um, so our health does decline typically as we age. So therefore locking in term premiums at a younger age probably makes sense for a lot of people. Um, but I also just uh, put a 65 year old into underwriting last week. So it's all based upon your health is the insurance company will determine what the cost will be. Okay. So I'm 54 years old and I've got four kids, 24, 22, 20, and 17. God forbid something happens to me unexpected because I'm in good health. Okay. But just hypothetically, I'm walking down the street, I get run over by a bus. God forbid. Right. But I want to make sure that these guys are taken care of. And I don't mean like millions and millions of dollars. Like, Hey, we're on easy street. Dad died. Great. We got all this money. You know, I'm just talking about enough money to say, Hey, we got to deal with funeral. Hey, I got to pay for school. Hey, I'm, I'm starting my career. You know, I was depending on my dad to give me a hand. Um, are there policies for 500,000, a million? Does it explain that part of it? Cause I mean, I I'm Kev, as soon as we get done with this call, we got to get serious about this today. Absolutely. We can apply for what we call human life value, which is at age 50, 15 times your income. That would be max for somebody in their fifties, 30 year olds get 40 times income. So with looking at what we're trying to cover, we can actually use math to figure out how much debt you may want to pay off, how much money you want to set aside for the kids college education, how much money you want to set aside for them to live on and come up with a number that's palatable, that makes sense. And then also look at once we've gone through underwriting, what's that going to cost? Um, I, I, I'll be honest, I've never had any client that, you know, when, we, um, when somebody's give, delivering a death benefit check, like the client's like, that's too much. What you can hear, though, is it's not enough to maybe maintain our same standard of living. So I, I just know that because when we're gone, we don't get to make a decision on how well our, our family will live. But if we make that decision ahead of time, we're going to be a little bit more peaceful in our actions and we'll feel better about our day-to-day -day lives. So if the bus does hit us, that our family's still going to be okay. But we want to apply for a number that's going to make your family comfortable if you're no longer here. What yeah. if you don't have necessarily uh, top billing in health? Because again, uh, yeah. dealing from my situation, uh, my mother didn't have you know uh, a top level of health. She wasn't necessarily a healthy person. She had a couple of strokes. Uh, is there anything out there for people sure. who don't necessarily have the level of health that one would, would need to, to qualify for something uh, that would have a nice windfall, but something to just take care of things. Yeah. Like, you know, well, let's think of most funerals today, ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, probably in funeral costs. Um, there are companies that advertise on TV today, like 25,000, no underwriting, doesn't matter what age, because they're going to take the premium dollars and it's a win for them. Um, so there are carriers that are like no underwriting, 25,000 out the door because they're really designed for funeral and funeral expenses, not necessarily for providing lots of income or college planning in the future. So there are some companies out there that we see all the time that do do that type of planning for their clients. And they've actually dragged one of the old game show hosts to do the commercial, which is pretty funny, but um, okay. All right. Right. But there are, there are, and it's just the process of looking. That's the big thing. And I think that's what lends to using a, any professional, not me, but any professional is for us to go to do the work for you to find the companies that will actually insure our clients based upon their goals, needs, and objectives. Yeah. I mean, that's just it. Like I, I just, Browner, you got four kids, you know, and they're right. little kids and you're healthy and you're young and you got a long time, God willing, but man, if something were to happen and you, look, they got moms and moms work and, and, you know, whatever. But I mean, I just look at my situation and I think to myself, okay, hypothetically, something goes wrong. And when I'm gone, like, this is a big mess, a big mess. And, and Rachel said to me the other night, she was, don't leave me with this big old mess, you know? And so I was talking to a buddy of mine last night and he said, he said, listen, 
you know, um, go get a term policy as soon as you possibly can. And that's why I called Kevin and said, Kev, you got to come on and explain this because it was Browner's biggest takeaway from his mom. And it's my biggest thing right now is I have to start dealing with this life insurance thing today. Well, you I know? think an another thing too is let's say, let's say you're, you're not going to get a life insurance plan right now. Cause there might be like younger people listening that are not like even thinking about that yet. Right. Like, so what about like your current, can you speak about like your current stuff that you own and how important that is, even as a younger person to make sure that that's getting benefited to somebody. And because I know from experience when someone passed that they had, you know, bank account full of money, car here, stuff here. Like, can you talk about how important just that process is as well, uh, uh, even before you get to life insurance? You know, I, I think for a lot of people, just getting their financial house organized is super important to kind of know what you own and know what you have and know what your pitfalls are. And I think that's part of any good planning process when sitting down with clients. For our younger clients, there is the idea of when they get life insurance when they're younger, A, they're probably the most healthiest. And B, now we're locking in a rate for them for a certain period of time. Um, that's a good thing. But I think a lot of times, too, younger people don't think about what could happen. They're so focused in the today. Um, and being in this business for 28 years, you know, I remember when one of my representatives recommended to a 25 year old male married already with a baby that they have life insurance. And he declined because he said that, hey, I'm I'm so young, I'm 25, like whatever's gonna happen to me. And at 27, he died of cancer, no insurance, left now a two-year-old and a wife behind. Now, that, that's not like an everyday thing, but it does happen. And I remember when my wife and I were much younger and we had two little kids and we were going on planes together you know, my first thought was, is I want to make sure my kids are taken care of no matter where we are on this planet. And we put life insurance on each other to make sure that our kids are always going to be taken care of. And today I still have life insurance in force. Yeah. And dude, I mean, I'm telling you, I had this policy through Kevin. I think the difference is there's term, which you said is a term 10 years, 20 years, whatever. I had something called whole life, as I recall. Does that sound like, am I using the right phrase? Correct. And that's kind of like a savings account. It's almost like an investment account of some sort. It grows as the years go on, right? Yes. Yeah. But with what proper premiums, it, yeah, with proper premiums, it can remain in force for your whole lifetime. And that's a benefit. I We do work and I work with a lot of people that are retired now. They wish they still had life insurance for a myriad of reasons of the cash value inside of their terminal or chronic illness, illness benefits that some whole life policies do provide. But they wish they would have had it. But they're at the point where they're uninsurable at this point because of age, age and health and et cetera. So it really boils down to cash flow, what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and then we really back into what type of coverage makes sense, term or permanent. But we really, really probably want to determine first how much coverage someone needs before we then figure out term versus permanent. Because at the end of the day, I do know this, when a death benefit check is delivered, the beneficiary doesn't care if it's a term policy or a permanent policy or anything. What they care about is the size of the benefit and how it's going to affect them, their family, and everything financially moving forward. Because that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, that's right. We're talking to Kevin Leon, longtime friend of mine, uh, college teammate. Actually, you know, it's funny because, guys, um, when Kevin came to Pitt, you know, he's a Southern California kid. I mean, he grew up, Kevin, in Orange County, right? Went to high school in yes, Orange sir. County, junior yes, college football, right? Community yeah. college football in, in Orange County, and then came to Pitt. And then got done and came back here to Southern California, started his family, started his career, and has been in business for all these years. And we still see each other uh, not enough, I can tell you that. And he's even coaching high school football right now. He's like one of the top high school football programs. Is Orange Lutheran, right? Yes, sir. And that's that's one of those schools, Orange Lutheran, that competes against like Modern Day and St. John Bosco, right? I mean, that you know, give us a little bit about that. Oh, this is awesome. So my, I, I work out with our head coach. He was like, can I get our schedule like behind you today? Um, what coaching allows me to do is to be able to really help young growing men in their lives in those high school years. I, I just love coaching. I love teaching. Um, you know, I, I, I'm like Scotty, an old kicker and punter. I just love that side of the, you know, of coaching. 
but we have a super heavy schedule. Um, we'll probably have a top five schedule in the nation like we did last year. Uh, Cause not only do we play Bosco and modern day and Jay Sarah, but we're also heading out to Bishop Gorman this year. Oh, uh, wow. Vegas, huh? uh, mm-hmm. and, and St. Francis from Maryland is coming to play us. Um, and I've heard they're no slouch as well. Um, but uh, I just love that side of the business and being able to be around people. And also some of the kids that are on our team are coming from one parent families and they're telling me, you know, how things have changed, you know, with the loss of a parent, et cetera, because it's just not the same. Um, But I just love that side of what I, it's not really work for me. It's fun. Matter of fact, I told myself if it ever becomes a job, I'm going to stop coaching, but I just love Mm -hmm. doing that type of stuff. So, and people like Scott saying, Hey, what can my kid do? So (laughs) uh, love it. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, hey, thanks for the information today. Uh, Browner, you got to you got to get it like I got to get it, man. I know it's a pain in the ass, dude, and it's a cost. And and sometimes you're thinking about, I don't have this much money to spend on life insurance right now, but we got to get it. And you, yeah, Browner, you, you inspired me to call Kevin and to kind of share this information with everybody who's listening today. So, Kev, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. You got any kind of disclaimer you got to read on the way out? You know, to, some other nonsense. <laughs> I, they told me I'm good as long as I say this stuff. One and done. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, gang. Right. I appreciate you All guys. Right, All right, hey, I'm start underwriting. Let's start today, dude. You got it. Okay, I don't, I don't know what to do. What do I? What do I need to do? I got thirty seconds. Call what me. do I need to do? You're okay, call me. Go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Kevin. All right. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. All right, man. All right. I hope you guys got something out of that. Like I know I did Browner. I hope you got something out of that. You know? Um, yeah, I have one, but I feel like I need more now. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, you, you don't have kids, but you do have a wife and you do have a place right. and you know, you, you, I don't know how much, you know, your benefit is, let's say it's a hundred thousand, 200,000, you know, yeah. you maybe need another policy and you should do it while you're younger. And especially when you've lost all this weight and you look good and you're probably healthier than you've ever been. Seriously. Got to get it done. We all do. We all do. All right. Listen, um, all the radio listeners, stick around. We got a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about, Manny Machado, Padres, et cetera. And podcasters, let's go get uncensored. All right, everybody. Hey, uh, I, I know that that last segment may have been like slightly, just like a little bit, I'll call it morbid and uncomfortable, not because Kevin's not a cool guy. And uh, just, you know, you're talking about something that people just don't like talking about. Right. And I'm not, I'm, that's why I'm happy to share with everybody that um, it's just, I don't have life insurance and I'm embarrassed that I don't, you know, and, um, and I got to deal with it. And the fact that, um, you know, last time I tried to get life insurance, they came to my house, they took my blood pressure, they took a drug test, whatever, whatever. They came back. They're like, hey, it's going to cost this much money a month. I was like, I, dude, there's no chance. I'm not paying that. That's why I was saying to Kevin, I want a term policy. I want a 10 year ish policy for whatever the benefit should be half a million, a million, whatever the dollar figure should be. And then find me the best policy out there. Find me the least expensive policy. So that if God forbid something happens, the kids aren't sitting there going, how do we pay for a funeral? Or how do we pay off whatever debt is remaining? Or did dad leave us any money? You know, I don't want to all of a sudden something happening. They go, wait, dad didn't have a life insurance policy. Now what do we do? So I'm going to deal with that today. I'm literally, when we're done, I'm going to call Kevin. I'm going to start the process. That's my, I'm I'm committed to it today. So what are you going to do, Browner? How are you going to handle this? Uh, I already had, I already had that done. Oh, really? You have a life insurance policy already? Yeah, I just use the people who I already have insurance with. It's not okay. a lot, but yeah, I figured I would need more than what I had. <clears throat> yeah. You feel me? Yeah, no, it's so. better to have it. Hey, you got something. I got zero. Alex, you yeah. said you got a policy too, huh? You got life insurance? Yes. How do you I mean, is that something that you set up on your own? Is it something that you know through Mars work? I'm just curious. Yeah. Like what prompted you to do that? Uh one through Mars work and one through uh farmers like auto insurance like a whole bundle yeah i don't know if it's bullshit or not but i was like ah, that's not that much money <laughs> yeah. that i'm paying to have something so 
I know yeah. for me, I'm just so like frustrated because, you know, I just, I just was dealing with this ESPN contract. And if you're a full-time employee with Disney, you have health benefits, you have medical benefits, you have life insurance benefits, you have all these things. Well, I'm not a full-time employee. So I'm only getting part-time benefits. I get a 401k. I get some tickets occasionally to Disneyland. And I, those are the benefits I get. But what I don't get as a part-time versus a full-time is I don't get to have medical benefits. So I have to use like health insurance through SAG-AFTRA, uh, mm. the union. And then I, I don't wow. have, life, and I don't have the life insurance, you know, and, and that really bothers me because the life insurance policy, if you work for Disney and something happens to you, they pay your family two times your salary. So if you made $50,000 a oh. year, they'll pay your family a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I don't have that, you know? So I'm going to talk to Kevin today and, um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to start working on a policy immediately. The SAG thing is like the most LA cap thing ever, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it, yeah, it's, you're right. not really, you don't, you don't have a choice. You know, like when you work up there in LA, you have to be a member of the union. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to pay like union dues, which I think probably for the year are probably about like $2,200, $2,300, something like that. And then you have to pay, uh, and then you use SAG after for your health insurance, which mm -hmm. significantly lowers the price from what I was paying when I was standing alone. Me and my mm -hmm. four kids, it was like 15 grand a year for health insurance. Medical insurance in between medical vision, dental, et cetera, is like 15 grand a year. Now that number has come down a lot because now I'm part of a union and that, you know, you're talking about thousands of people, you know, yeah. using. So anyway, all right, let me, uh, let me move on to a highlight of the day. Let me, let me leave on a, on a positive note. Can we do that on a high note? Okay. Switch my highlight of the day. Okay. Uh, I was going to talk about, I was going to give a shout out to Willie Mays, but that's not a very positive no. note. I bet you Willie Mays had life insurance. <laughs> yeah. I, guess. I would I mean, assume. He was, he was 93 years old, wasn't he? 93 years old. Somebody had to hook him up with some life insurance at some point. So, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, Willie Mays died yesterday at the age of 93. I know we went all in on Jerry West, but I mean, Willie Mays as a baseball player, I mean, that's that's as good as it gets right there, dude. I didn't even know this. And forgive me if this is not as if it's a, if it's a bad thing, not knowing this. He missed his age 21 and 22 season because he got drafted to the to the military. Wow. For that's the war, crazy. my boy. Yeah. yeah. Like he yeah. played a year in the Negro Leagues, was drafted and then joined the Giants. So like the dude missed his age 21, 22 and still hit 60. 660 Steel. home runs. Still. Amazing. Steel. Wow. The Giants Steel. put this out. Was it two time MVP, 24 time All Star, 12 time mm. Gold Glove, two time All Star MVP, um, World Series champ, rookie of the year, and obviously Hall of Fame in 1979. Oh, man, got 24 All Star appearances. 24. How many years did he play? Probably 24. I mean I mean, that's unbelievable. And, and <laughs> what, what do you think? What do you We're think? Number most, 24. Mm -hmm. What What do you think most people know of Willie Mays? What he mm -hmm. had the catch at center field. That's oh, it. Like what's he most that, known for? Yeah, that's it. That's the catch. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those stats that you put up there. Yeah, he was a legendary player, but he was 93 years old. So mm -hmm. the guy hasn't played in 60 years. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, um, and people just, yeah, he was in the hall of fame in 1979 already. Right. Right. So, so if you right. weren't born in 1979, you don't have any idea other than unless you have a baseball card or you've seen some movies or you've, you know, you've heard the name, but what you do know is the catch over his head, you know, the catch. It's yeah. like, it's known as the catch in baseball. Right. Every sport, I think football has a duck catch. Yeah, that's a Dwight, Tyreek. Dwight Clark. No, Dwight Clark, uh, oh. Joe Montana. Okay, yes, in the back of the end zone. Okay, mm -hmm. and oh. then, this is the catch. I was going. Go, <laughs> Which catch, catch were you going to say? OBJ. Yes. No. Nah, well, no. Well, let's. I mean, let's, on a level of impressiveness, the OBJ yeah. is not in a, in a different world. Way than better. Whatever that Dwight that, Clark. Yeah. Yeah, Dwight Clark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That All was right. like such a nothing catch now like looking catch. at it now it's well, yeah. other than what it meant in the game but it wasn't sure. like spectacular yeah but yeah you see that it. every single sunday no problem right. every game yeah it was yeah. listen man the, the 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 beckham catch is literally the greatest football catch ever and Julian i don't edelman's in the super bowl well hey the listen David tyree I, helmet catch 
All these are good catches. Listen, I'm not saying that those aren't good catches. The David, the, the Odell Beckham Jr. catch is the greatest catch in the history of football. I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Um, I would put up – there's a couple others that I would put up against We're going it. hell okay. at ESPN right now, but okay. whatever. But All I right. would just tell you this. Antonio Cromartie picked off Peyton Manning in Qualcomm Stadium. He had three interceptions that night. And one of them was almost the exact same catch that uh, mm. Odell Beckham had. Almost the exact same catch. And it happened years before. Uh, yeah. That's the highlight of the day. It's presented by Tory Holistics, California Holistics, Oxnard Holistics, and you guys all know the you guys all know the story. Uh, when you're buying your cannabis products, you go to Tory, you go to California, you go to Oxnard, and when you spend seventy five dollars or more, you save twenty percent when you use our code Dude, Kaplan Crew. I know we're wrapping up, but you saw uh, <laughs> Stephen A. Smith in the NBA Finals. They did his tunnel walk like he was a yeah. fucking player. You <laughs> yeah. all saw that, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw Chris Russo ripping him. Mad Dog just fucking shit on him today. Him like, down. dude, I, lo I love that Stephen A found a guy that he'll take some shit from right. because everybody else he fires. Like, right. he could not get rid of J.J. Redick fast enough, dude. Great like, the dude got J.J. up out of there. But to see Mad Dog just say what in all of America was thinking when that video came out was was just a breath mad, of fresh air for mad dogs older mad dogs um equally as wealthy mad yeah. dogs got his own xm radio channel mad dog is a sports radio legend so mm -hmm. so you know the thing is is that Stephen a actually respects him and to me that seemed very um very intentionally self-deprecating for Stephen a here's mad dog ripping him what are you you're walking in like you're going to score 36 points tonight? who are you lebron <laughs> You know, look at, look at the security guy behind you. Like, what is your deal, bro? Right. And the, and the fact that he's killing him and then Stephen A just sits there and takes it and then kind of joked around. Like, I'm trying to remember what Stephen A said, but it was really funny. I can play it if you want. I just, oh, yeah. Go ahead and play it. Go ahead and play it for everybody. Okay. Damn, we should have played it during the show. I know. We didn't even play the Mike Shield John Boy. Oh, shit. I didn't know. There was so much cursing. I didn't think we could. Oh, I edited it. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. It's here in the... How about him walking into game four oh my God. with the Celtics on Sunday night in Dallas? Steve. Oh, I, mean, I didn't is, see this Steve, video. Steve, Steve, this is Is stupid. it going on behind <laughs> you? You got a guy behind you. You got Steve. the cameras. You know, what do you think? You're going to score 36 this night with the sunglasses on? <laughs> I mean, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. How about going to a ball game with a T-shirt on and a pair of shorts, sitting in the upper deck and having a beer with the fellas? Why are you doing this? Look at this. Okay. And this is laughable. We, are, we know you're okay. a star, Steve. Okay? okay? We know you're a star. You don't got to show off. Go sit upstairs okay. and way? watch the game is, privately. Is that your way of saying the suit was pretty fly? Okay, let me say this. Let me say this. Yeah, yeah. Let me say this. Yeah. Okay, first of all, it was a great suit. And, and you, you did look good. I almost texted you, but then I was like, you know, I don't want to be that nice. But the fact that you just said, what did you think you're going to score 36? <laughs> it's freaking hilarious because he walks out like he's LeBron. He's got the irrational confidence. It's and that's little, what makes him Stephen A. It's not, it's, a little rough. it's not a rough. It's not irrational. It's not irrational. Okay, I got it. That was very funny. That was really, really funny. I, I hey, Broder. do it out here on the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Broder, do me one favor, though. Give me give me some Juneteenth. I know that uh, banks are closed today, and the stock market's <laughs> closed today, and, and it's a national holiday now. And I, I'm working, um, but it is a national right. holiday. Well, we're working because Browner won't let us take today off to right. sell. And, Correct. And, you know, and I just – let me hear what you say about Juneteenth. I apologize for it, uh, taking this long. Should have probably no, started the show with this. Look, this is very simple for me. I work on Martin Luther King's birthday. I work on Juneteenth. I work on all major black holidays. And I do that for one very specific reason. A lot of people lost their lives. A lot of African Americans and a lot of people who, who walked alongside of them during the fight to get equality. A lot of people lost their lives for me to have the ability to go to work, you know, without anything in the way of it. And as a black man in this particular industry in which we work in, where there are not a lot of us, especially here locally, there are not a lot of us. I think there's two. Uh, I want to make sure that I use the time and space that I have here to represent a culture and a, in, in a level of professionalism that should be projected out amongst black people. And so with Juneteenth today, I work, but the basis of Juneteenth, for people who don't know, because a lot of people don't know, is there were slaves in Texas 
who did not know that they were free until two years after freedom was actually given out because the people of Texas made sure no one else found out. And so they had to send the army to Texas to tell all the slaves, hey, y'all good. Y'all can walk out. Y you can go. Put that down. Put that down. You can go. And the fact that, you know, it, it took so long for this to become a holiday in America is a story different amongst itself. And then what happened to black people after slavery was ended, which a lot of people don't know either, is the black codes is also something that, you know, people should look into. But Juneteenth, June 19th is a very monumental day and it should be celebrated and it should be respected. And I'm glad it's a federal holiday uh, because it should have been a long time ago. Amen to that. Amen to All that. Right. All right. Uh, let's do this. Let's There's rock out of holidays here. holidays that are popping up now, huh? Like just new ones being created that we like that what? people take days off. Cesar Chavez, oh. MLK Day wasn't like a federal holiday for a, a while. And yeah. Arizona is still late. Yeah. They fight it. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I know. I'll also say this. I think that the idea that including other minorities as national holidays is somehow offensive to uh, other Americans is, is really laughable. Like this country is an absolute melting pot. And that's what makes it great. It's not great because there's more of one thing than the other thing. It's great because in large cities, we come together and people can live next door to each other and not have problems that they have in other parts of the country. Like there's Jewish people and Muslim people can live next door here. Blacks and whites can live next door here. It doesn't matter whatever your cultural issue is in the country in which you origin from. When you come to this country, People all people find a way to get along, and that's important. And we always need to make sure that we're holding that up as a sam as an example of what this country means, man. And we need more of that. So more Cesar so, Chavez Day. There's 11 federal holidays in 2024. We this is the fifth of the year. There's six left. Can I run through them and you tell me if we work in or not? Okay, go ahead. Just federal holidays, not mm -hmm. just re other holidays. Um, next up, July 4th, Independence Day. Okay, we all take that day oh, off. Oh, and, and by the Monday, way, we, I just want to say one thing: it's it, you take off Fourth of July not because it's more important than Juneteenth. It's just because you grew up taking off Fourth of July or it being right. a big deal. Okay, so keep right. going. It's a big deal. Yeah. Right. Uh, Labor Day, Monday, September second. Most people take that day off because they've been accustomed mm -hmm. to taking that day off. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the newer ones, I think. I don't remember. Monday, October 14th, Columbus Day. No. I don't take that day off. No. That's a federal holiday. I won't be no. here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Monday, November 11th. How do we feel about Mondays being federal holidays as opposed I to like Fridays? That. I like that. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Monday, November 11th, Veterans Day. Yes. Um. Yeah, we I would work on that. that I would work on that day. Never taken that day off. Yeah, I'd work that day. Thursday, November 28th. Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm going to be gone then that whole week. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, I think that's F1 again. Um, when's, oh, Christmas. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I'm, week not, taking, that I'm week. not taking Christmas off. What does Christmas mean to me? I'm not taking it off. Out Christmas. Do you, you celebrate more Christmas than you celebrate Hanukkah? <laughs> you, Mr. Christmas. <laughs> you are Mr. Christmas. I'm fucking dude. Santa Claus all up in you this. You love bed. Christmas, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking showing up to our boat uh, party in a goddamn Christmas tree hoodie, dude. Yeah, I'm, Christmas. Fucking, I'm Santa Claus a witch, <laughs> all up in it. <laughs> Santa you know? Claus a witch. Right. All right, we got to go. We're back tomorrow. I'm <laughs> Santa, Santa Claus a witch, is what I said. That's, <laughs> That's fucking awesome. right. All right, we got to go. We're out of here. We're back tomorrow. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.